Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman from Pittsburgh State University in the Department of Automotive Technology. And here's another uh, air conditioning uh, video. Um, this is a uh, part three of a series that we've been doing on uh, basic AC systems. Uh, in part one and part two, we covered uh, capillary uh, TXV systems and H valve TXV systems. And now we're going to be covering uh, orifice tube systems. So if you haven't seen the uh, first two videos, I recommend watching those two first because we covered a lot of basic information about air conditioning. And now we're moving on to the uh, orifice tube systems. So uh, students, uh, first, uh, as you see the, uh, the, the system in front of you, the orifice tube system in front of you, hopefully you're able to identify, you know, the, uh, the five pieces that you see here in the system. And so maybe I'll take a, a second. You can pause it and you can identify those yourself. Uh, but uh, you should know what uh, those are. You should know uh, what the lines are in between each of the components. Uh, you should know... Um, the, the four quadrants and uh, what the status of the refrigerant is in each of those uh, quadrants. So I um, recommend uh, pausing now to maybe practice naming all that stuff. And uh, now I'm going to, you know, give you the answers. And so uh, I'll hit the call outs here so you can kind of see those a little bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about how an orifice tube system is different from a, a TXV system, not just components but the uh, but the way the system operates, uh, you know, a TXV system, either it being a capillary or an H valve system, is is meant to be a continuous running system. The compre compressor tends to run all the time once the engine is warmed up, especially on a hot day, and the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, TXV will regulate, you know, open and close the valve to regulate the amount of refrigerant that is going through the evaporator. Well, an orifice tube system. You have a orifice, a, a constant orifice, typically we call that a fixed orifice tube if it's fixed, that has a hole in it around, you know, 60 thousandths. Uh, one maker model could be 62 or, or 58 thousandths, but I typically say, hey, somewhere around 60 thousandths, there's a hole. That's all the time. And so, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and hit this uh, animation so, so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. But as the refrigerant goes through that orifice tube, it's putting the same amount of refrigerant through that evaporator at any given time you know if the car's at idle if it's 30 degrees outside or if you can see today here in pittsburgh kansas it's 13 degrees today or if it's 113 degrees outside uh, at a constant rpm you know whatever that is we're going to put the same amount of refrigerant through that orifice tube uh, it, it, it's fixed and so on a day like today where there's no heat load in the car we have a problem and that is is, is that we flood this evaporator you know we flood it and there's no heat load so i'm going to have uh, liquid going into the evaporator but i'm also going to have liquid coming out and that liquid is going to fill up the accumulator and 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 really the if, if you take a look at this accumulator as far as the way it's designed you know the accumulator is uh, even though the tube is coming out of the bottom it's removing all the refrigerant from the top so so hopefully only vapor is coming out of that well, you know, if I'm flooding the uh, evaporator and, and and not much of the refrigerant is evaporating, I could fill this thing up full of liquid. So typically we have like, let's say, a low pressure cutoff switch uh, somewhere on this accumulator where if um, if the pressure gets too too low, under 20 PSI, we're going to uh, click the uh, compressor off or we're going to turn it off electronically. So how a, 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 t, a orifice tube system operates is that it, it, it kind of operates under the, 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 the freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw type of principle. So what, what I mean by that is that it, when the compressor kicks on, we're going we're gonna to flood the evaporator to a point where the evaporator is, you know, close to uh, uh, freeze up. You know, the, um, the low pressure cutoff switch is sensing, you know, pressure starts at 30, then it gets down to 25, and it gets down to 20, you know, somewhere around 20. It could be 18, could be 17 degrees Fahrenheit, could be 21 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever the, the switch is set out as, it will open up the circuit and it will turn off the compressor. And, and then as that compressor turns off, that evaporator, you know, the pressure starts to go up higher and higher and higher. So it goes from 20 to 25 to 30, you know. So, so, so the evaporator is, in essence, thawing out. And it's going to thaw out to around, you know, 40 PSI. Could be 41, could be 42, could be 38. But somewhere around there, the low pressure cutoff switch will kick the system back on again and allow the uh, the refrigerant to flow. So, so I, I think of that under two scenarios. We're either um, trying to freeze up the evaporator 
when the clutch is on and then when I turn the clutch off it, it tends to thaw out or you could also say that when the clutch is on I am flooding the evaporator with refrigerant and then when the clutch is off I'm starving it either way that will work but the situation happens is that you know on, on a mild day there is um, there is no heat load so so again we have to have something something between the evaporator and the compressor to protect the accumulate I'm sorry to protect the compressor in case you know a mild day like this where I'm flooding the evaporator and so when you think about it probably most days you know you figure you know you get into your your spring months you know your um, March April May you know half of June we're probably flooding this evaporator and there's probably still a little bit of liquid coming out and so again that liquid is going to stay towards the bottom of the accumulator uh, only uh, vapor is going to come out of the top and so so really on 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 most days the accumulator is doing a big job of protecting the compressor so liquid doesn't get sucked in to the compressor on the suction line on a very hot day you know it's 100 degrees in kansas well uh when i'm uh turning on the compressor and i'm getting full flow of you know refrigerant flowing through there i'm flooding my evaporator now there's enough of a heat load to where refrigerant goes in and it you know at some point you know it all turns into a vapor so 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 again uh vapor goes into the accumulator vapor goes out uh even though the accumulator is in this low pressure vapor quadrant <laughs> on most days again on most days there's probably liquid going in but the key is is that there's vapors coming out so when you look at this accumulator you know it has three functions very similar to a re to receiver dryer it has this desiccant in it and so that desiccant is removing moisture it uh, acts as a, a storage device you know it's storing refrigerant in there but it's also um, acting as a protectant of the of the uh, compressor it's protecting the compressor so no um, no um, liquid gets in now you're probably asking yourself well wait a minute if only vapor is coming out and oil is circulating through the system how does the oil get out of the accumulator um, well the it, if the line is down low like this, like how kind of how you see it, there's going to be a little hole, you know, a, a little small little hole with a filter around it. That if any filters on, the, sorry, any oils on the bottom of this, it's going to also pull the um, pull the oil out. So there's a little pinhole in there on that. So when you take a look at this this accumulator, you know, you grab that accumulator, it's going to be pretty cold. You know, even this line uh, going from the evaporator to the accumulator, if you could grab that. And, and again, the uh, the accumulator could be seen almost on you know, every single vehicle I, I pop a hood on. Uh, you can see the, the accumulator and you're going to look for the suction line, the big line coming out of the compressor and where it goes all the way to the bulkhead, somewhere in between that that line, you know, you're going to see this accumulator. So accumulator, again, typically very easy to spot. I grab hold of it and it's cold, you know, it's going to be cold and it's going to be, you know, pretty cold uh, before, pretty cold on, on that because, again, you, you, you normally have refrigerant boiling in there, removing lots of heat all the time. So let's talk about if I have a compressor failure. So, you know, if I'm replacing the compressor, what else am I checking out on this system? Well, again, in my previous videos, I say, well, it depends on how that compressor fails is it locked up or is it just leaking refrigerant you know uh, is the clutch bad and that's why you're replacing the whole entire compressor or is it more of a you know catastrophic compressor failure so if it's a catastrophic compressor failure can anything in the system cause that compressor to fail and and and, and you have to realize that you know there is oil uh, come in uh, through that accumulator and and, and and there's that little pinhole so if that little pinhole somehow gets clogged up and oil can't be pulled through that well then you could have a accumulator that um, is starving the compressor full of oil and it's um and, and that's the reason why it, it has failed but but in any regards if you are replacing the compressor you're always going to replace the accumulator because that has a desiccant in it and you're going to want to um, have new desiccant in the system uh, also you're going to typically replace the orifice tube and so the reason why i i pull the orifice tube out and replace it is because the orifice tube is considered the filter in the system uh, uh, when you look at the orifice tube uh, there's two little o-rings right there and um, 
and, and that's separating the high pressure to the low pressure side. And you have one side that's a lot bigger than, uh, than the other side. And now, and that bigger side has a big screen on it. That's, you know, that's facing towards the condenser. And so, so this is considered a filter in a system. And so I'm always going to pop the orifice tube out and I'm going to inspect it. I'm going to see if there's any metal shavings or any black gunk or whatever in the screen here. And if there is, then I know that, well, that material came from the compressor. It had to go through the condenser. So then that's giving me information on, hey, what am I going to do with this condenser when I'm doing that replacement? You know, if the compressor has failed and I'm replacing my accumulator, I see my orifice tube has a whole bunch of, you know, gunk on it, you know, debris on it. Well, then I'm going to consider, well, number one, either back flushing my condenser or replacing it, depending upon um, what, um, what you do in your shop as far as um, condenser replacement. Uh, if the compressor has failed and uh, I'm going to replace my accumulator and I inspect my orifice tube and I don't see anything on it at all, you know, it's very clean. Well, I'm still going to replace the orifice tube, but that at this point I may just uh, reverse flush my condenser just to see if I get any uh, debris out of it. And if I don't, then uh, I may decide to um, keep it because there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, if I don't replace the condenser, I'm always going to replace my normal parts, my compressor, my orifice tube, my accumulator. I'm going to hook up my gauges after the repair, after it's properly charged, and I'm going to do some diagnostics. I'm going to make sure that the system is working right. I'm going to make sure it's, that the performance test is working good. I'm going to make sure my pressures are good. You know, that way um, uh, I, I know that there's not a restriction uh, here in that condenser. So even, so if I don't replace it, I'm still, you know, doing some thorough diagnostics on it after I get a working compressor back on the system. The surface tube could be anywhere in this liquid line. So I, I've seen it up, you know, over up by the radiator condenser area, you know, way up front. I also seen it, you know, uh, close by the evaporator, by the bulkhead, or I seen it, you know, on the passenger fender somewhere under a battery or something like that in the middle of the line. So, so sometimes, you know, it's hard to determine where that orifice tube is at. And I tell students, hey, just when the AC is working, you know, you, you, you grab the line. And if you, you, if, and if you grab the line and it's warm, well, you know that the orifice tube is still downstream. And so you keep grabbing the line until all of a sudden you get a cold spot. So you got a cold spot on one side, you move your hand an inch and you got a warm spot. Well, there's where the, the orifice tube is. It's normally um, on a connection. You know, you normally see it by a connection so you can take it apart. But but not always. It could actually be built in the line where the only way to to um, to uh, replace that orifice tube is to replace the whole entire liquid line on that. Uh, on that. But that does also good diagnostics because, you know, if you um, if you feel the um, the um, the high side of the liquid line, the high pressure side and it's cold and you go over to the uh, low pressure side and, you know, there's no temperature drop. Well, that's very concerning. <laughs> is the orifice tube even in? Uh, it somehow has it blown out. Um, I, I have seen scenarios where um, technicians have done repair. They would have sworn they put the orifice tube in. Well, they didn't. They connected the line back together again. They got distracted whatsoever. System doesn't cool very well. And typically, if there's no orifice tube in the system, uh, the, uh, the the condenser acts as the restriction in the system. So typically, your um, your line coming right out of the condenser is is cold. It's cool. It's it, it, it's not warm at all. So indicating that um, that there's no orifice in the system. Because if that orifice isn't there, then this is not really high side pressure anymore. Because you have to have an orifice in order to to make that uh, liquid line high pressure. And so typically what happens again is that this line coming right out of the condenser, the condenser is acting kind of as a restrictor and uh, it, it's cool. I will ask my students another question about this system and, and I'll, I'll say, why is the accumulator needed in the suction line? But on a, on, on a, on a TXV system, well, we put the receiver dryer over here in the liquid line. So again, why is that accumulator needed there? And, and again, students, you may want to pause and kind of think about that question as far as um, uh, the answer. And I, I, I typically state it, why is that accumulator in that position in relationship to how the system operates? And again, remember that, you know, it's there because it, it's protecting the system. And the reason why it has to be there is that, again, on a mild day where I turn on my AC compressor and I'm flooding my evaporator, there's just not enough heat load to allow all this refrigerant to evaporate 
and there's going to be liquid coming out and there's liquid coming out on most days and so we have to have a, a storage device in there to accumulate that liquid to give it time to evaporate and in any closed system uh, uh, the bottom of it is going to be liquid and the top of it is going to be vapor and again it's going to be uh, pull out a uh, vapor if i do see the line coming out of the uh, accumulator to be uh, frosted then i'm concerned i'm concerned that um that the that, that the compressor is not turning off so so what i'm concerned about is that you know i, I get down the 20 psi get down the 17 psi get down to 15 psi you know and for some reason the the compressor is not turning off the the freeze up control is not being activated uh, could be a bad pressure switch could be a, a temp sensor in here somewhere monitoring the evaporator temperature but anyway it's not shutting off well if it's not shutting off it, the, again the accumulator will fill up full of liquid on a mild day and uh, we will pull liquid up to the compressor and that's never never good for the compressor at all okay i think that's probably a, a good stopping point uh for this particular uh video uh, i'm gonna do one more video uh, to talk about uh Orifice tubes a little bit more in depth because we also have not only a fixed variable orifice tube, but we have a variable orifice tube that they started to introduce around the uh, 2000 model year time that um, we need to talk about how that operates. So again, this is uh, Professor Scott Norman. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, video. If you're looking for more automotive educational videos, uh, please subscribe to my Professor Pintain YouTube channel. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.